Hello everyone, I'm Bob and this is the Home Bitcoin Immersion Mining Channel. Today on this build episode, we're going to cover what size of system I'm going to build, where I'm going to build it, and what type of system I'm going to build. So with that, let's get going. Okay, so in our last video, we talked about how you could size your system focusing on costs. Uh, there's a link above if you want to go watch that video and learn more. Um, from that analysis, we kind of came to the conclusion that your target for paying for your electricity for your system is going to be about seven and a half cent per kilowatt hour. If you can't hit that number, you might as well go use a hosting facility. So from that last video, we stated that the first step in your analysis is to figure out how much you are paying for your power at your home. Uh, I did a little research, looked into my local power provider, looked on that electricity local website as we kind of brought up before, and what I found is that the price I'm paying at my location here is a little over 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, as we stated before, I'm going to have to subsidize my power if I want to get my cost below that 7.5 cent per kilowatt mark. And lucky for me, I have a 13.5 kilowatt solar system on my roof. So just like last time, I'm going to bring up this handy chart. And we start off at the bottom with my identified power cost, about 11 cents per kilowatt hour. We go up to 7.5 cents per kilowatt hour, which is my target. And I go over to the left-hand side, which takes me to a ratio of 0.3. And just like in last episode, we find that the next step is to go to the PV Watts website and figure out how much power my system's going to generate over the course of a year. And what that turns out to be is 20,500 kilowatt hours per year. Now, if we do a little math, we find that the total power my miners can consume and stay under the 7.5 cent per kilowatt hour is a little over 68 thousand kilowatts per year. And if we do a little more math, we find out that that equates to about 7.8 kilowatts of energy I can use in my miners. Now, if we go off and look at the kind of popular models out there, say an S19, that equates to two miners plus maybe a little overclocking on the side. And so the size of my miner setup is going to be about two miners. Now, the next big question to ask is, where am I going to put this thing? And to start off, we're going to look at a picture of my house. As you can see, this is a normal house. Uh, it's a simple ranch style house, one layer plus a basement, both fully furnished. I live in a normal neighborhood. As you can see, my neighbors are fairly close by. This is an average home. And if you remember in our initial episode, I stated the whole purpose of this channel is to build a mining setup in an average house. And if we look at my house a little closer, here's a view from above. And if you remember from our last episode, the first big question to ask when looking at location is where's your power coming from? And for my house, the power is coming in from the rear of the house. Got it marked here. And so your next big question is, well, can I put my miner right next to my power? That's the ideal location. So you're not running electricity around your house. Well, for me, unfortunately, that's not going to work. That area around my power, both in the main level and in my basement, fully furnished carpet, it looks nice. I'm really not going to be able to set up a miner in that location without causing some problems. So setting this up next to my power source really isn't going to work. And so the next thing to look at is to look where other sorts of house infrastructure is. Uh, where's my furnace? Where's my water heater? And it turns out that I have a utility room kind of in the center of my house. Now, this location is pretty far away from any exterior wall. It's far from my power, but maybe it'll work. So let's go take a look. So this is my utility room. And honestly, this is a pretty good location for building a mining setup. Um, if you look here, I've got plenty of room to build whatever I want to build. Um, I'm on a concrete floor, so if something makes a mess, it's really not going to do too much. Uh, above my head is a pantry closet and a broom closet on the first floor, so I have plenty of avenues if I need to route power or cooling fluids. Uh, my furnace is right here. My water heater is right there. Um, makes it very easy to integrate with either of those. Um, honestly, if it was up to me, this would be the perfect location to build a mining setup. However, I'm also building a YouTube video series. And as you can see, the shooting angle, the lighting, everything else here really isn't going to work well for that. And so for that reason and that reason only, I'm not going to be building here. I'm going to be building it somewhere else. So to make this YouTube channel, I'm finding that the ideal location isn't really going to work out. And so I need to find a new location. Lucky for me, I have a project or workroom right next door to my utility room. And uh, this actually might work out. So let's go check that out. So here we are. This is the room where I'm going to be building my mining setup. And honestly, this isn't too bad. Uh, lots of room here to build whatever I want to build. Uh, the floor is industrial carpet squares on top of concrete. So if I make a mess, 
I can pull up a few squares, not, not a big deal. Um, behind me is my air compressor. I've already had to build down some high current lines, so building additional power into this room should not be a big problem. Uh, as we looked at that diagram, next door is the room where my furnace and water heater are. So if I'm gonna be routing cooling fluid over there to heat my house, to heat my hot water, shouldn't be a big deal. Um, honestly, this isn't gonna be that bad of a location. However, there are some downsides to this room. Uh, number one, this wall here is a concrete foundation wall for my house facing the front of my house. Uh, there are no openings here and I'm not gonna put any openings into my house. And so I really can't reject any heat that direction. Same thing for behind me. This is a concrete wall and behind this is my garage. Really not an avenue to vent any heat that direction. And so honestly, any heat generated in this room is gonna stay in this room unless I pump it out. So that's gonna be one of the big challenges of working in this room is every bit of heat generation is going to have to be removed. Otherwise, this will turn into a sauna. So there's a downside, but outside of that, this should work okay. So that location is gonna work really well for building my mining setup, but one of the downsides is I'm gonna to have to find a way of getting all that heat generated by the miners outdoors. Now, if you remember, we're going to be using immersion cooling for my mining setup. So we're going to be transferring all that heat into a cooling fluid. That cooling fluid is then going to be pumped outdoors where it's cooled by a radiator. Now, here's the thing. I have good neighbors to both sides of my house. I really want to make sure that I don't build anything that makes a mess or that's noisy or that otherwise upsets them. Lucky for me, on this side of the house, I have my garage and so do my neighbors. So this means I can build my radiator in this side of the house without disturbing my neighbors too much. Now, one of the downsides of this setup is the run. Uh, it's gonna be a very, very long run to move this fluid to the outside. I have to pump this all the way through my garage. And you know, as I said at the beginning of this whole video series, I'm looking to build kind of the worst case scenario. Hopefully in your setup, you're not gonna be that far away from a suitable location for your radiator and it won't be that bad. So I'm gonna design, build something, and most likely you'll be able to build something a little less complex, a little more simple. Hey folks, just a quick reminder to hit that like button so the YouTube algorithm will share all this good content with other people and for you to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any good content coming your way. With that, back to the episode. And this brings me to the final decision I have to make, which is, do I build a single loop or a dual loop system? Now, as I just covered, the run going from my miner to the outside radiator is quite long. In addition, uh, in the area that I live, temperatures can regularly get below zero during the winter with maximum record lows of being maybe 30 degrees below zero, okay? Um, in addition, if you note, we're gonna try and heat our house with this cooling fluid. And so even though the furnace and water heater are right next door to my room where I'm building my miner, there's still gonna be some routing issues there. I'm gonna have multiple bends, multiple fittings. And so taking all of this together, just like we discussed in the last episode, a dual loop system makes a lot of sense. And so that's what I'm gonna be building here a dual loop cooling system. Now again, this is the more complicated setup. You may decide to build a single loop system in your house, but the idea here again, is to show you how complex you can build it and then you all can step back and do what you need to do for your setup. So that's all we have for this episode. Uh, we covered what size of system I'm going to build, where I'm gonna build it, and what type of system I'm gonna build. Uh, next episode, we're gonna talk about tank design. Hopefully cover a lot of new topics looking at exactly how you build a tank for emerging cooling. So with that, 